Hey guys, and welcome back. It's been a while. I haven't posted anything in a long time, but I just want to do another movie review. Sorry for the mess. It's not my fault. It's my wife's fault. Ask anybody if you if they tell you anything different, they're lying. <laughs> OK, <laughs> anyways, let's just get into it. Furiosa. I watched Furiosa about two nights ago. I want to let it simmer. I wanted to let it set in my mind a little bit before I talked about it. And I just got to say, like, it's pretty good. <laughs> and I can't help but compare it a little bit to Mad Max Fury Road, right? And that was a bit of a twist as well. And I, and I, I understand why some people are a little upset by it. I have never seen another Mad Max film, so I really can't say that much about why I would have been frustrated or, or anything by it being really a movie about Furiosa. So we've got Mad Max Fury Road. Mad Max is very much a side character in this film and it is fantastic. I love the visuals. I love how weird it is. I love how intense it is. I love the music. I love the chaos and the color and everything was so unique. And that's the thing is like, it's not necessarily the best film, but you can tell they just spent forever just thinking about the cool stuff that they were going to do. And it worked out awesome. I went to see Furiosa and I, I figured they pumped it out pretty quick, comparatively speaking, I guess, to Mad Max Fury Road, right? And I knew it would get a smaller budget because Mad Max Fury Road didn't perform how they had maybe expected it to. And so I think what it came down to was the I think the director maybe wanted to try a different bit of a different style, a bit of a different take on the wasteland. It ha it mostly works, right? We've got a couple different factions. They're all vying for power. You've got Chris Hemsworth. He didn't feel like Thor, which is great. I was a little worried that it was just going to feel like Thor, but in Mad Max. And he did he did awesome. I loved the makeup. The makeup was a perfect amount of makeup to not make him look silly, but to make him look different enough that I wasn't like, that's Chris Hemsworth. I've seen him a bunch in movies. He seemed just like a little bit weird looking, right? He has his extra nose and they, they did awesome on his makeup. His character was fun. It's a little different, a little, a little kooky. And uh, it was a fun film. Anna, Joy, Anna Taylor Joy, I believe is her name, did awesome as Furiosa. Uh, the girl they got to play her as a child, holy smoke, she looks just like Charlize Theron and Anna Taylor-Joy. So that was brilliant casting, wonderful casting. And it was a cool prequel, right? The hard thing about prequels, and I think this is something that can kind of break immersion sometimes, is when you have these different things you've set up, right? These car chases where here's the technology that they have. Here's the unique things they can do, right? They're throwing spear bombs and, and all these different things. And I think introducing this faction of motorcycles helped add some new fun little things that they did during the film. But it didn't necessarily make sense because it's a prequel for there to be new or different or better things than they had in Fury Road, right? Because they would have developed more cooler stuff at that point. So why would you have new stuff in the prequel? And so that's always, I think, a hard thing. Anyways, I thought it was cool. The And I have one gripe with the film. And really, like, honestly, the best of the movie is great. It's not nearly as good as Fury Road, in my opinion, but it didn't need to be. I'm already, I was already a fan of Fury Road. I just wanted to see more in that universe. And it delivered in that category, right? The big problem, the big sore on this movie, right? The festering wound <laughs> that I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it, is the soundtrack. I don't know if they forgot to hire a guy. I don't know if they, I'm sure it was intentional and it shouldn't have been, but it, it felt like they forgot to make a soundtrack. And then they were like, well, the movie's due tomorrow. <laughs> like some kid in high school that didn't finish their project, right? Or their paper. It's due tomorrow. What do we do? Well, I can only get like three songs done by tomorrow. Well, I guess we'll just release it with three songs and the rest of the movie will be painfully silent and feel very, 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 very long, right? I mean, Fury Road had such an awesome pacing to it because you had just nonstop awesome music action going and I understand it didn't need to be Fury Road however there's a reason why movies have soundtracks and I feel like perhaps Fury Road uh, figured that out and used it to its utmost potential and Furiosa uh, forgot 
why soundtracks exist and that it has hints. There's a scene where they're in Bullet Town and there's some music and it starts picking up. And I'm like, where was the music? It's been like an hour and a half. We're finally getting some music. And then it turns back off after like a minute and a half. And I was like, that would have been cool to have the rest of the movie. And then it just turns off and and you're like, okay, are we, is it coming back? Or like, are we back to silence again? And we were, we were back to silence for the most part. There's a, there's a couple little snippets of music in there, but the music it's, it's fine. It's very similar to Fury Road when, it, when it exists for the most part though, the movie feels so long. And I think it's because there really isn't music, everything. And it doesn't feel because Fury Road gave you that exhausted feeling. You had been, you feel like as exhausted as the people that are being chased, right? As Furiosa and Mad Max, because it just won't let up. The music is intense. Everything's going crazy for so long. And then you get a little bit of a break when they're lost in the desert. And then it's right back to it, right? And they're headed back to the uh, Citadel, right? So I just think, it really comes down to the fact that the, the, the movie suffers a ton, in my opinion, because it does not have a soundtrack in reality. Like the music is so sparse, it may as well not have a soundtrack. And then the credit music is like wild. I was like, this is, I, I just don't understand. It was, it didn't fit anything. It didn't fit the vibe of Mad Max. It barely fit the vibe of the emotion of the movie. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened with the music. It was terrible. It didn't fit. It was non-existent. It, it was fine when it was in the movie, but uh, there were some odd choices and it would just end very early. There's still action going on. The music just goes away and it, or it just takes forever to start. It's like action's been going on for 10 minutes and all of a sudden there's like, here's a little bit of music. And then just it's gone again. And we're back to just it's it felt like someone took the music out of the movie. It was so strange. Anyways, Furiosa, it's a fun time. I hope you enjoy it. I'm curious whether or not anyone else felt the same way as me. I felt it is glaringly painful throughout the film to not have music. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm curious and I hope that you guys are supporting movies and theaters and especially films like this that are not, I mean, yeah, it's a Mad Max movie, but it's not like it's, it's a fun, unique movie, right? There's not 12 of them and, and it doesn't, and they don't come out every two years. So highly recommend you guys check it out and let me know what you think. Frios is a fun time. I thought the st story plot, everything else is, is good or in, in some cases, great, right? Like the, I still love the style and the costumes and the makeup and all of the cool lore and factions and all of that worked really well. But that music in this movie, I just don't know where, why, why they thought that that would be okay to do. And we'll catch you guys next time and uh, have a good one.